Here's a problem statement for you. Imagine you have billions of users across the world. Now imagine they have different levels of access to emails, documents, videos, photos, each with their own complex sharing rules. Now imagine all of that needs to be checked millions of times per second with low latency, global consistency, and five nines availability. Oh, that sounds easy? Wait, there's one more thing. All those rules have to be stored in a normalized form, which means that a single group or policy could be hit tens of thousands of times per second. How would you solve for that? Well, this is the problem Google faces every day, and they use an internal authorization system called Zanzibar that solves this in fascinating ways. And today we're going to unpack one of its most impressive tricks, how it handles hotspots without sacrificing performance or correctness. Buckle up, this is systems engineering at its finest. Very quick context, Zanzibar is Google's centralized authorization system. It powers services such as Google Drive, Calendar, Gmail, YouTube, and a lot more. That means whenever you or a billion other users try to view a shared file, edit a calendar event, or comment on a video, Zanzibar decides that you're allowed to instantly. And to meet those demands, Zanzibar handles millions of authorization checks per second, all while enforcing consistency and maintaining high availability. But one of its toughest challenges is how it deals with hotspots. And that's what we're diving into today. Essentially, a hotspot happens when the same piece of data is accessed over and over again in a short period of time. Now, in Zanzibar, this typically means a very popular group or object ACL access control list is being checked thousands of times per second. For example, a large team might share a doc and hundreds of people run a search query that fans out into different ACL checks. Now, because Zanzibar stores ACLs in a normalized form, meaning it avoids duplicating access rules, every check for a shared group hits the same data. And now that puts a lot of pressure on backend services and can cause latency spikes or even failures if not managed. And remember, authorization is on the critical path, so we cannot afford any failures here. So, how does Zanzibar prevent these hotspots from taking down the system? Well, there are four techniques they use, and the first one is distributed caching. Now, the Zanzibar servers act as a distributed cache, which means they store results of previous reads and access checks in memory. So, any future check can be served instantly without going all the way to the database. Now, to make this efficient, Zanzibar uses something called consistent hashing. This is a technique to evenly distribute data, or in this case, cache entries across different servers, while minimizing moment when a server is added or removed. So if one ACL result is needed again, Zanzibar knows exactly which server holds that result. And this way, it avoids hotspots on individual cache nodes, and it ensures there's load balancing even at massive scale. But wait, if you cache everything everywhere all at once, how do you prevent from reading stale data? Well, that's what the Zanzibar paper describes as the new enemy problem, and this is where Zookies come in. Essentially, a Zookie is an opaque token that encodes a globally consistent timestamp. When a client modifies any content, say uploads a file or removes someone from a shared folder, it gets a Zookie tied to that update. That Zookie is then used in all future access checks for that content to ensure that they are evaluated at or after the change. Now, what does this mean? Even if Zanzibar serves the result from a cache, it will only do so if it's fresh enough, guaranteeing that no stale ACLs are ever used. This design lets Zanzibar serve most of their access checks from the cache while still respecting the casual order of ACL and content changes without requiring expensive global synchronization. Pretty cool, huh? The second technique is internal RPC optimization. Essentially, when one server needs a cached result from another, it sends an internal remote procedural call to the right server based on something called a forwarding key. A forwarding key or a hot forwarding key is just an object ID or an ACL reference that's very frequently accessed. For example, if hundreds of access checks involve the same shared group, the object ID of this group becomes the hot forwarding key. And to reduce load, Zanzibar caches results at both ends of the internal RPC, both the caller and the callee. And it may use internal load distribution tools such as Slicer to spread the load of that hotkey across multiple servers. The third technique is timestamp quantization. 
instead of giving every access check a unique timestamp, which would create millions of distinct cache entries, Zanzibar rounds timestamps to the nearest few seconds. So this way, many requests share the same cache keys, even while still respecting consistency requirements. And the last technique is using a lock table. Now let's say multiple requests hit a cache key before it's populated, rather than all of them triggering redundant database reads, which would really hammer the backend, Zanzibar uses something called a lock table. Essentially, a lock table is an in-memory structure that tracks in-progress computations for a given cache. Now, if 50 checks come in for the same ACL and it's not cached yet, only one of those requests will be allowed to compute it. The other 49 will wait until this result is available and then use the cache result. This avoids the classic cache stampede problem where too many processes flood the backend all at once. Now, how do we know all of this? Well, the good thing is Google detailed all of this in their white paper called Google Zanzibar, which was released in 2019. And if you want to read an annotated version of this white paper with a foreword by Kelsey Hightower, click on the link in the description. So these are how hotspots are handled, but there are also special optimizations for the really hot spots. And by that, I mean something like a viral video ACL or a shared company folder which is being accessed maybe even more than a typical object. Zanzibar goes even further with two key optimizations. First, they have full read and cache for hot objects. So instead of reading just one ACL tuple, Zanzibar reads all the ACLs for that object and caches them in bulk. That uses more memory and bandwidth, but it makes subsequent reads blazingly fast. And two is a delayed cancellation of subjects. Normally, if a parent ACL completes early, Zanzibar cancels the subjects. But if other requests are waiting on the subjects, it delays that cancellation just long enough to let the cache be populated. That way, latency for those concurrent requests doesn't suffer. Now, why does this matter? Well, these strategies like distributed caching, consistent hashing, lock tables, and dynamic optimizations make Zanzibar incredibly resilient. According to the Google Zanzibar paper, these techniques prevent over 500,000 internal RPCs per second from hitting the database. That's how they maintain sub 10 millisecond latency for 95% of requests that come through, even under massive unpredictable loads, at planet level scale. Hotspots are a classic problem in large-scale systems, and Zanzibar's approach is a masterclass in combining caching, coordination, and statistical design to keep the latency low while keeping availability high. If you found this breakdown useful, give it a like, uh, subscribe for more deep dives on authorization, and also let me know what you'd like to see me cover in the next video. Maybe I can talk about the Leopard indexing system or how Google uses Spanner and TrueTime for global consistency. Thanks for watching.